my hands and have a recording of that because we're having some technical difficulty. But that being said, uh, Madam Secretary, please call roll. Martha Casabon. Uh, Pug Lauren. Here. Lindo Richardson. Here. Todd Bouchard. Here. Bernie Willie. Dave Manella. Here. Jimmy Davis. Here. Patrick Fitzmaurice. Here. Dave Dougherty. Here. Kirk Drum. And Ron Randolph. Yes. <laughs> to continue on from there. All phones and page, uh, pages, please be silent. If you want to appeal the decision of this commission, there's going to be appeal cards up in front that you can gather. If you'd like to speak on a certain case tonight, there's speaker cards up in front also. Uh, after your uh, public, if you have to continue public speaking after this uh, uh, commission meeting tonight, then please go outside so you don't make any noise in the building. Invocation, uh, we'd appreciate uh, uh, Commissioner Randolph to do the, the invocation and Commissioner Drum to do the allegiance. Thank you, Commissioner Trump, for using your right hand on your heart. Okay, and again, uh, I will not be able to turn your speakers on, so everybody will have to talk loudly tonight. Looking at the approval of the July 3rd minutes from last month, do I have a recommendation to approve? Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Com Commissioner Pug. Second. Second by Commissioner Darty. Please vote. By hands. Yay. Okay. Nay. Approved. Staff, do we have any postponing of cases or withdrawals? Okay. We can go right directly to the public hearings tonight. Let's start off with case number 2018-917-ZZ, existing zonings A3. Proposed zoning is public facilities one, locations parcel located on the west side of Allen Road, north of Miller Road being 57209 Allen Road, Slidell, section 13, Township 9 South, Range 14 East, Ward 8, District 14, 3.44 acres in size. The petitioner is Jeffrey Schoen, and the owner is Faith Bible Church of Slidell, Alfred N. Young, Council District is 14. Mr. Shane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. This is Shane. I feel like 
like to just make a few statements uh, that uh, will not only uh, give the Commission the current status of the case, but also the general public as well. Um, I think some thanks go out to uh, Councilman T.J. Smith and also in particular certain members of your commission that have uh, served and actually attended uh, two community meetings throughout this process. Uh, that would be Chairman Manella, but also Vice Chair Davis, Mr. Doherty, Mr. Drum, and certainly Mr. Randolph. Um, I believe that uh, your presence, your efforts, and your thoughts have encouraged the parties to continue to talk, communicate, and try to find common ground uh, as it relates to this case. Uh, now to be more particular, uh, we believe that the parties uh, have uh, amicably resolved their discussions and are in support of a recommendation by this commission to the council for a change of zoning to PF1 uh, based on a commitment and offering by the petitioner to impose a deed restriction against the property. Uh, I have a copy of the deed restriction, which I'll ask Ms. Lambert to give to the secretary to go into your minutes. Um, we do not ask that the deed restriction become a part of the recommendation, but note we would ask that the recommendation be made in light of our irrevocable commitment to execute uh, and record the deed restriction if and when the council uh, adopts uh, an ordinance rezoning this property to PF1. Uh, in particular, the deed restriction since your last meeting in July has been specifically amended to make sure that certain uses are prohibited from the property, such as overnight stays, drug alcohol rehab centers, and things of that type. There is also affirmative obligations to construct an eight-foot wooden fence around three perimeters of the property within six months. And we have also agreed to a height restriction uh, as it relates to any new structures that would be built in the future, such that none of them would exceed the height of the tallest or second building that's on the property now. Uh, there's some other details in the deed restriction, but those were the things of principal concern and discussion in recent months. So uh, with that having been said, uh, I would like to reserve any additional time I may have in the event it's needed. Quite frankly, I hope it's not needed. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Maurice, uh, Ms. Treg, and all of the other residents, many of which I do not know by name, but that have worked with uh, Faith Bible Church of Slidell in hopefully uh, going to the next step of not only allowing this church to have PF1 zoning, but also to create uh, a new uh, neighborly atmosphere, if you will, between the church and the properties that are in the area. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Uh, is there anybody in audience who would like to speak for the, and thank you. Name and address, please. Good evening, uh, commissioners. I'm uh, Judy Bergeron Treg. I live at 57223 Allen Road, adjacent to the uh, subject property. <clears throat> First of all, uh, I too would like to ex express my gratitude to the commission for the patience that they've exhibited uh, on our behalf so that we could engage in efforts to dialogue with the petitioners over concerns for the rezoning of the church property. Uh, during a committee meeting, a community meeting, it was proposed by, by Mr. Shane that the deed restrictions might be a way of addressing the community's concerns at, and at the same time allow the church the ability to rebuild an event of a dis disastrous event resulting in significant damage to their property. Uh, negotiations, although very difficult and frustrating at times on both parties, has resulted in an agreed upon uh, document of deed restrictions, which represents compromise by both parties, and an agreement that I think we can amicably live with going forward. Um, also, I want to acknowledge the support we received from Councilman T.J. Smith, who was persistent in urging dialogue between neighbors, and particularly to those commissioners mentioned earlier uh, who attended and facilitated our community meetings we thank you. 
Uh, lastly, based on Mr. Uh, Shane's representations that the agreed upon deed restrictions will be executed by Pastor Nathan Young and recorded in the parish's conveying records upon granting of rezoning, I wish to express on behalf of the adjacent landowners, Thomas and Almeida Bradford, Donald Laurent, David Page, and myself, support for the rezoning of Faith Bible Church. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. Is there anybody uh, would like to speak against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Mr. Randall. Go ahead. It works? Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> We've heard a lot of accolades, um, and it is very, very obvious that the infinite wisdom of the gov our government, our council to set this commission in place as an independent body to get the community as well as the residents as well as the petitioners involved in what we call a very workable process. It worked, um, it's resultful, and when communities and petitioners get together and exchange dialogue, nothing comes out but win-win situation. And I love win-wins. And um, I wanna thank the residents for your dedication, your passion, <laughs> um, and your, um, your, your I, I would say, your intestinal fortitude of keeping this dialogue going and having a concern not just for your residents, but also for the way the, the law and the process work. To uh, Mr. Shane and also Reverend, Reverend Young, um, you all being engaged and having an opportunity to be objective and to have an open and listening ear and patience as well as on both sides to come together and make this happen. To my commissioners, um, you guys are just a, a good group of concerned, smart, intelligent, men and women who um, I've learned a lot from. And um, I look forward to working on any other opportunities that may come before it. And with all of that being said, my vote is to move and to vote in favor of the motion with the deed, deed restriction. We have a motion by <coughs> Commissioner Randolph to approve. We have a second by Commissioner Dougherty. Do we have any other comments? If not, with a raise of hands, for yay. Oh, we can vote now. Oh, great. Please vote. We got it working. Motion passes. Thank you. Case number 2018-1064, ZC, Zixing Zonings, Highway Commercial 2. The request to propose zoning is A4A, parcel located on the west side of Nellie Drive, north of US 190, being lot 16, square 4, Pine Shadow Subdivision, as, uh, South 11, uh, Township 9 South, Range 14 East, Ward 8, District 12. 6,250 square foot acreage size. The petitioner is Barbin Builders. Doreen Barbin, and owner is Floron Properties, LLC, Rondo L. Richard, Council District 12. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the, the lot to be developed with commercial and or residential uses. Staff doesn't have any objection to the request, considering that the objective is to allow for the construction of a single-family residence, and at this time, staff would like to recommend approval. Yes, ma'am. Your name? Doreen Bobbin. The reason we're wanting to do this, because I know everybody's been in question, because you 
we are allowed to build a home on it is because when we build and go to resell, it's the mortgage restrict the restrictions that is a problem. You're not allowed as many options of a mortgage loan when the, the property is considered commercial. That's why we want to make it residential. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would, wants to talk against this case? Anybody in the audience want to talk for this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. I think it's Commissioner Doherty's online. I'm looking. Commissioner Doherty. Thank you. Uh, we've had from time to time uh, similar type cases come before us and this is just getting the, the zoning in the proper place so that they can build a residence so that uh, if something should happen on, uh, uh, like a Katrina that they can go back and rebuild. So I'd move to approve. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Lauren. I'd just like to repeat what Commissioner Dowdy said. We, we've done this several times before where, we, <clears throat> where homeowners have had trouble refinancing or financing a house because the zoning doesn't quite match up with what the house with the rest. So I'd like to second the motion. We have a second by Commissioner Lauren. Please vote. Case number 2018-1069 ZC, existing zoning is A2, suburban district, proposed zoning is A2 with a manufactured housing overlay. Parcel is located on the north side of Net Avenue, east of Sunrise Street, west of Bayou Parquet Street, being lot 65, Chateau Estates, and 144 Net Avenue in Slidell. Acreage is 1.25 acres. The petitioner is Roxanne Wojcik, and the owner is Roxanne Wojcik. <laughs> And this is in the Council District 11. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses, including manufactured home. Staff would like to recommend that a request for a manufactured housing overlay be approved. Yes, ma'am. I'm a school bus driver, and um, I'm planning on retiring in a couple of years, and um, I would like to get the uh, manufacturing housing overlay approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the audience against this case? Any, any, let's, let's go with the, anybody in the audience for this case first. Anybody in the audience against this case? Please come up one at a time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, your name and address? Uh, my name's Dion Cueva Steedy. Um, I live at 134 Ned Avenue. My husband and I own our home there. Um, sorry, I'm nervous. I don't normally speak. Okay. I grew up in Madisonville. I've lived in St. Tammany my entire life. Um, my husband and I bought this home um, in, on Ned Avenue, and we opposed changing the existing zoning, which from what I understand is A2, um, A2 Suburban District to Suburban District and MHO, Manufactured Housing Overlay, we think that it will devalue our property and our house, um, and we are very much opposed to it. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? No one? No one? Oh, yes, ma'am. My name is Jill Thurman and I live at 143 Ned Avenue and it's right across the street. And um, it, having manufactured homes in our, in our neighborhood would seriously devalue our property and it's right across the street from us. So that's the problem I have. <laughs> okay, thank you. Is there anybody else would like to speak against this case?
Hi, I'm Warren Frank, and I live at 148 Ned, which is one lot over from the uh, proposed. And I also just want to uh, reiterate that I'm, I'm, I oppose it for the same reasons, devaluing our house. And I've been back there for 19 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, change for a rebuttal. Oh, we have another person. Sorry. Just to be on record. Um, my name is James Steedy. I live at uh, 134 Ned Avenue. Um, we actually went out and got a petition for this. Um, there we go. Thank you. And there's certainly not a lot of neighbors on it, but if you come into our neighborhood, you may understand. You'll know why. Um, we also have this um, document here that was made when the neighborhood was made. And if you notice on line three, you can go ahead and inform us what that document oh, okay. currently says while, while the commissioners are reading. All right. I just do have one more question, though. Um, is there a difference between the uh, a manu a mobile a manufactured home on the wheels compared to a, a a home that comes on a trailer and being built? Manufactured home is pre-manufactured and then erected on site. Right. Not a mobile, not a trailer. Correct. Okay. That is correct. Is there anyone else in the audience? Speakings. Yes, sir. Your name and address? My name is Craig Furman. Yeah. I live at 143 Ned. And uh, we bought a house directly across the street from that property nine years ago. When we bought the house, the real estate agent and many other people told us that uh, there would not be any new mobile home, manufactured homes, uh, permits issued in that neighborhood. Uh, as of right now, I, I looked at the entire subdivision. 30.9% um, of that subdivision pay $39 a year in property tax. They just pay a dock fee. They don't pay any property tax. They're not all uh, trailer homes, but uh, some of them are in very bad shape. They should be torn down. Uh, I've brought uh, one picture. I've been trying to get that thing removed for uh, a year and a half. Um, but uh, besides that, um, the uh, um, I wouldn't have any objection to them building a small home. Uh, I mean, even 12, 1,500 square feet, as long as it's a home, that's not going to be removed, you know, coming and going whenever they feel like it because uh, they actually talked to me about this when I first saw them clearing the lot. They were discussing putting an RV camper there. And uh, some of our residents in our neighborhood are living in campers, and it's devaluing our property. Every time we try and get our home refinanced, which we've done like three times, we get shot down by the uh, appraisers. These uh, trailer homes and uh, blighted properties, uh, they devalue everybody's home in the neighborhood. Uh, but yet every four years, we, tr we get a, uh, uh, an assessment uh, increase on our property. And um, um, we're objected. We, we strongly object to um, a trailer home or a camper living as a residence in front of our home across the street. And that's uh, all I have to say. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else? If not, I'll bring it back to rebuttal for the person who wants to uh, apply for a manufactured ho housing overlay. And again, this is not changing the zoning, you're just placing a manufactured housing overlay on the actual existing zoning. When I spoke to the neighbors when I first started um, clearing a lot, 
I told him I have a motor home not to live in, but that I'll be putting on the property not to live in while I'm building anything. He's trying to say that I'm trying to live in the motor home. That's not true. I have a motor home and I would like to put the manufacturer home on my property, but I also just told him nicely that I do have a motor home that I would be putting back there, not where they can see it. He just built the eight foot fence in front of my house, in front of the house. He don't have to see anything. And it's not like I'm gonna buy a trash trailer, you know? I have morals, I have, you know, things that I think is uh, acceptable. But for them to do that and they don't even know me is outrageous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have five minute rebuttal time for the people against this case. Do we have anybody that would like to talk and rebuttal? Yes, sir. What she just said is untrue. She did tell me exactly what I said. And uh, we pay about $1,500 a month for our home, which comes to about, if we pay all our notes on time, that's $550,000. We want our house value to go up, not down. And we have tried to get blighted properties and you know, trailers that were uh, flooded out in Katrina removed, like one at 153 Ned, and from code enforcement, we just get a uh, stone wall. They don't, they don't do anything to remove these properties. And like I said, we just want our, if our assessment goes up, that's fine. We just want the property value to go up along with it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'd like just to confirm um, uh, the definition here, and maybe I misunderstood what Mr. Fitzmore said, but um, a manufactured home is a mobile home. A modular home is considered as a stick-built home. And maybe I misunderstood what you said. I just wanted to clarify. Right. No, I'll just clarify too. There are two okay. Types yes. Of, Thank you. Okay, I bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Doherty. Thanks, sir. Uh, this is to staff on your uh, comprehensive plan. The, the last sentence there, it has in planned subdivision for manufactured homes. Uh, this particular subdivision is not a planned subdivision for manufactured homes, I don't believe. Is that correct? What well, is currently single family residential, and um, you know, anyone has the possibility to petition to have a mobile manufactured housing overlay. So, if it were a, uh, a modular home and not a manufactured home, then it would fit into the A2 zoning even without the overlay, is that correct? That's correct, a modular home is a permitted use. It is considered as a stick-built home. Okay. Uh, based on, on that, and not really seeing from the aerial, uh, most of the homes that I can see uh, are quote-unquote stick-built homes. I, I see one in the upper left, looks like it may be a uh, manufactured home, but the rest of them all look like they're stick built. I'm going to move to deny uh, this based on the fact that if uh, Ms. Roxanne wants to put a modular home there, she can do that. But a manufactured housing, I, I'm having a problem with that because most of the uh, homes in the area are uh, stick-built homes and a modular home would fall into that classification. Thank you. 
I have a motion to deny by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Drum. Uh, yes, sir. I drove down this street about two weeks ago and looked it over. I saw that the lot was being cleared, but I also noticed that every house that I saw, the only trailer I saw was up near the beginning of this area, and it's been there like 40 years. It looked like it was put there yesterday. And uh, I'm against, so I, I second his motion, I'm against putting a manufactured home on that piece of property because of the rest of the area. Okay, I have a motion to, to deny, seconded by Commissioner Drum. Any more Commissioner comments? If not, please vote. Motion to deny. Motion is passed. Ma'am, you can always go to the council. Twenty eighteen ten seventy five ZC a text change for an ordinance to amend. St. Timothy Parish Unified Development Code section one thirty twenty one sixty three minimum off street loading requirements to amend the required number of parking spaces for institutional and commercial medical uses, clinics, and medical office buildings. This is I a, a legal one to make a, a staff, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a, a request here to uh, amend the regulation. We've done uh, research nationwide as well as in Louisiana and um, discovered that for the most part, uh, the ratio for institutional, commercial, medical use, clinics, and medical office buildings is is five spaces per thousand square foot of building. So staff is in favor of this request and would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to talk against this on its amendment? Anybody for? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Dowdy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is to staff. I'm just trying to get in my mind exactly what we're, we're doing here. And, and I used a, a figure of an 1,800 square foot building, okay? And based on the 1,800 square foot under the old definition, if I've calculated it right, uh, that would be 13 parking places. Under the new proposal, it would only be nine. Does that sound right, that we're actually decreasing the number of parking places? Uh, well, this is nationwide pretty much a standard. Um, we may be decreasing it. Uh, if you have a concern, you could always amend it and keep the first definition or the first requirement for a certain building size. However, this is pretty much the, the numbers that are being used nationwide as well as in the Baton Rouge and Jefferson Parish area. I'm just, I just can't see us reducing the number of parking places because you go to a a lawyer's office, a doctor's office, uh, any type of a, an office building and that is, has a lot of, uh, I'm not, well, a lot, that may not be right, but has a fair amount of uh, business and customers going in and out. All of a sudden, we're cutting the number of parking places. And not only that, uh, you've got to have uh, one or two, and I'd hope two, handicapped parking places in that nine. So you're taking away from the general public parking places, which I'm having a problem with. I just want to make sure that uh, and we're on the same page here. We're referring to not just general offices, but to medical offices. If you would have a general office, such as an attorney's office, the requirement would be one space per 350 square feet. 
So that's generally three spaces per thousand square foot. Now here we're looking at five. So you definitely have more required for a medical office than you would have for an attorney's office, and just as an example. Okay, but, and I understand what you're saying, Helen. But under the old definition, if I'm looking at an 1,800 square foot office building or a medical office building, I calculate 13 parking spaces. That's one for the doctor, two for the employees, and then uh, 10 for, for patients. An 1,800 square foot would be, a, I want to say, a reasonable size for a, a medical office building. I appreciate your comments, sir. Um, You're coming up with the same numbers. I came what, no, up I, with I do. I, I appreciate your your, your comment. Um, you're welcome to make any changes if if you would like to. Uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to uh, some of my other commissioners and and let's see, you know, where we go with this discussion. But it was just something when I was going through this. I started looking at it and I said, let's just see where we are with the old and the new. And all of a sudden we're, we're taking away parking places. So I'll turn it over to, I guess, Mr. Richard. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I did the same calculations uh, at 2,500, 5,000 and 10,000 square feet, a variety number of doctors and staff personnel. And no doubt what, what's being proposed here is reduction in parking spaces across the board. Um, and, and my concern is, I, I haven't been to a doctor's office any time recently that, that, we had that we didn't have difficulty finding an open space. Um, and I guess my question when I, when I chimed in was really for you, Helen, was you guys are absolutely comfortable that these are the numbers that are being used nationwide, and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that. Um, also, I, I would like to add that when we're talking about one space for 175 square feet, for the most part, we use this calculation for patient area. Mm -hmm. But Not you also had a comment that in here you, you have a, a space for a, a physician, and you also have two spaces for every three employees. That's in addition. I combined all that, and we still came up short. So I guess my question is, it, it, I can appreciate simplifying it, um, I certainly appreciate the economic development component. Is there any room? Um, because we're looking at probably seven spaces per thousand square feet to be equivalent or close to it, six point something. Is that out of the ordinary? I mean, is that is five, is six or seven spaces going to be prohibitive for us? Is that a problem for our developers, for our physicians? Because quite frankly, the parking lots are already full. I don't know if it will be prohibited. Uh, I haven't, you know, done a calculation um, per se. I, I, as I said, uh, I've discussed this with Mr. Fontenot, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he's done the research. Um, I don't know if legal wants to add um, anything to this. You know, the, the commission is welcome to make any changes. Well, I'd certainly like to make a recommendation but uh, to make a change, but if our staff and, and our, our planning director has done exhaustive research and I'm sitting here just scribbling some numbers down and looking at real-life experience, I certainly don't want to contradict them. I'm just not seeing enough information here to vote on this particular change. And if you would like to, I'll be happy to... Um, you know, provide you with some more information maybe next month as to, uh, you know, examples from others, other parishes or other cities that are using it okay. and, you know, see if I can bring you some more concrete numbers. I don't have the information with me at this time and I'll be happy to. I understand. And I'm certainly not trying to put you on the spot. No. But um, I, I, this just doesn't feel right. I know that's an emotion and not facts, and I'd rather see the facts. So I'm going to let some of our other uh, commissioners speak. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Lauren. Same comments. I, I did some math on it, too. And I think it's not just a 
it's not just that it's a reduction in the park in places, but it's a it's a pretty substantial reduction. I'm, I'm if my math is right, we're talking about a 20, 25 percent reduction. And as Mr. Richard said, most of the time when I go to the doctor's office, you, you go over you go over to the doctor's office at Lakeview Hospital, and the parking lot's full. I mean, you got to park a block away. <clears throat> I'm just concerned about reducing because the nation has reduced. I, I just want to make sure that we're not talking about hospitals here. No, I'm talking about the doctor's wing. The doctor's wing. So, and and it would be it would be true of any of them. It, again, it's 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 the high percentage reduction that, that really concerns me, and I think that's what I'm hearing from from Dave and Todd. I'm just uncomfortable with. We're saying we want to target ourselves to be like Baton Rouge. What if Baton Rouge has got it all wrong? <laughs> no, I would not say that. Um, I mean, as I said, they're, they're I'll be, not known for having good traffic in Baton Rouge. <laughs> I'll be happy to do additional research and have more information at the next meeting for you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Darty. Well, based on uh, what I've heard right now, I'm going to put a motion on the floor. To postpone this till our next meeting and I know we've got two more commissioners that would like to speak so I'll leave it at that okay we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Doherty Commissioner Drum I second the motion we have a second motion to postpone by Commissioner Drum any other comments one comment I have on this even if this was adopted here when you say five spaces per thousand square foot building if the building is 1,100 square foot, would that make it mandatory you have 10 spaces? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, is it, when you say over, I mean, that's just something else we need to think about too as well. Okay, uh, please vote. To postpone, excuse me. For one month. Motion carries. Motion carries. Okay. 2018-1079-ZZ, existing zonings A3, Suburban District, Highway Commercial 3. Proposed zoning is all Highway Commercial 3. The location is parcel located on the southeast corner of I-12 and LA Highway 434, South, South 1417 17, and 18, Township 8 South, Range 13 East, Ward 7, District 7. Total acreage is 31.34 acres. Petitioner is David and Mary Aquistapace. Owner is the same. And the council, District 7. Staff? The objective of this request is to allow for the southern portion of the 31.34 acre parcel to be rezoned to HC3. Staff is not completely opposed to the request, considering that the site is abutting the on ramp to I uh, Interstate 12. However, the request should be reduced in size to allow for a portion of the property along the southern boundary line to remain zone A3 suburban due to pro the proximity of some of the existing single-family residential lots to the south. At this time, staff would like to recommend a, a denial of the request. Thank you. Yes, sir. Rick Richardson for Mr. and Mrs. Aquistapace. Rich. Um, <clears throat> when Mr. Aquistapace bought this property, it, it was all commercial. and. It's been appraised as commercial, and just recently it was reappraised. It lost a significant value because it's apparently at some point part of it became A3. It has no plans for anything out there right now except for it substantially reduce the value of his property with this change. I spoke to Mr. Gorby. He has no problems with it. We agree that we would never use that pine Acres Road as an access point. The access would always be from the highway, and uh, I would respectfully request that you approve this change. I think it's consistent with the area. If you look at the quadrants all around that interchange, the, the air, areas of HC3 are much larger. And in fact, just across the street, that's where the, the, the waste transfer station is. 
and all kinds of industrial things in that area. So this is certainly consistent with that area, and I, I would respectfully ask that you approve this change. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody uh, in the audience who wants to speak for this case? Anybody want to speak before this case? Yes, please come up. <coughs> yeah, I'm Brian Aquist Pace. I'm the son of David and Mary. The, uh, I just wanted to reiterate a couple of things that Rick said about them purchasing, and it was commercial. And a lot of people have been talking about devaluing property by reassessments or appraisals and things like that because of either manufactured homes or other things, but that's kind of the same situation. This is a little bit of a devalued because of a change in zoning that, you know, the, the reason why. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Is there anyone in the audience against this case? Please come up one at a time. Your name and address, please. My name is Blaine Rosa. Um, I live at 63067 Pine Acres Road. I've owned the property since 1981, and I've lived there since 1982. Uh, I've raised my family there. This neighborhood, I've watched it grow from a forested neighborhood with maybe four or five homes to what it is today, and it's basically a suburban neighborhood. We have a lot of children in the neighborhood, small children that are being picked up by buses. We have flooding issues back there already, okay? When my kids were in school, the bus would not even come down my street to pick them up because there was so much water. I'd like to know when this property was changed because it would just be of interest to me to know when it went from HC3 to Suburban. My understanding when I bought my property was that entire street at the end of Little Dixie Ranch Road and Pine Acres Road was all Suburban at that time. I would be vehemently opposed to anything changing back there, okay? We already had the waste transfer station across the highway pretty much shoved down our throats. I don't want to see any more changes back there with the problems we already have. Uh, it's all family. It's all still stick-built homes. It's a nice neighborhood. It's been that way for a long time. We don't need these changes. There's plenty of commercial property available in Lacombe There's and along the highway 434. There's no reason to make this what it is. You're going to ruin a neighborhood, a good neighborhood. We don't have crime problems. The only issue we have back there is that Little Dixie Ranch Road is so narrow, if you're driving a pickup truck, you can't pass another pickup truck without having to stop and pull your mirrors in. I don't know how that was ever designed that way, but it's too small, okay? The street I live on, Pine Acres Road, isn't so bad, but the ditch is so close on both sides, we have problems already. So. I realize that they're, they're saying they're not going to want to cut anything through back there, but I really don't want to see any changes, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people back there praying our property taxes. We have good homes. We want it to stay the way it is. That's the way it was bought. That's the way it is. Leave it the way it's been, okay? That's what I'd like to ask. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Uh, Michael White, 63128 Pine Acres Road. Our property abuts this uh, other property that we're talking about, changing the zoning. Uh, already, as mentioned, there are flooding problems on Pine Acres Road. We get a good heavy rain, and we'll have a foot of water on the road, and it'll stay there for a day or two. Uh, the roads are narrow. There are a lot of children back there, and uh, I would like to see them kept safe. Also concerned that no matter what is said, if it's turned into a commercial property, then there will be construction back there. And that means removal of the, uh, the trees, the foliage back there, which would exacerbate the flooding problem as well. That 31 acres of trees, I realize that he doesn't, these people don't necessarily want them to be there. Uh, we do because the trees soak up a lot of water. And if they're gone, that water's got to go somewhere, and since that property is a higher elevation than all the properties on Pine Acres Road and Little Dixie Ranch Road, that water's going to head for us. And since we already have problems with flooding, that would just make it worse. Uh, and as mentioned, it's a nice, quiet neighborhood. It's a, it's a lovely place to live. And if we make that kind of change, it would uh, degrade our property values and the quality of life therein. 
Also, they said they would not access through uh, Pine Acres Road and Little Dixie Ranch Road. There's no other access to that property at this time. And those roads are narrow, and I'm sure with heavy equipment moving in and out, it would tear up those roads something fierce, and we'd be in an even worse situation than we're in now. So that's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Diana Wild, 63081 Pine Acres Road. Um, I want to just reiterate some of the things that you've already heard. Um, traffic on that road, I've already seen trucks going into the ditch because the oncoming vehicle, it was not wide enough for both of them to be on the road. That's how narrow we're talking about. So if you're talking about dump trucks or anything else to go in there, it's going to be an issue. Um, also, the infrastructure situation that we have with the water situation, the more cement you put out, the more water has to go elsewhere because it does not have soil to flow into. So that would be um, a water situation. And there are, have been times when some of the houses could actually have water in them if it gets too, too bad. Um, also, it's an area that has little to no crime in it right now, and we would like to keep it that way. Um, we all cherish our uh, neighbors. We take care of each other. We watch out for each other. Um, that is the kind of neighborhood it is, and we want to keep it um, safe for our children and safe for the, the residents that live there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, We'll bring it back to Mr. Ricker, who, who has uh, five minutes of rebuttal time. Rebuttal time. First of all, we have no intention. I mean, we front 434. There's absolutely no intention of utilizing Little Dixie Ranch Road or Pine Acres Road. Okay. Respectfully, it's not like Mr. Aquistapace is out driving around looking for a piece of property to buy to change to commercial. When the man bought the property, it was all commercial. This is simply a question of fairness. Mr. Quistaface bought this property as a commercial piece of property. Truthfully, from the map, I don't even know how you figure out actually what the dimensions are of the part that's A3 versus the part that is HC3. Actually, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. I don't know how you do it. 31 point something acres. He's, I don't, his, piece, his parcel looks to be like the only piece it's divided into two different zoning classifications. So I don't know where you draw the line, or even where it goes. Staff, I, is there a comment on this? I mean, we, we have the information uh, that we can provide in our office. Uh, it would it, They would have needed to get a legal description of the area from a surveyor of the area to be rezoned to A3 um, before submitting for zoning change. However, since it was it was submitted as a whole, they they basically would advertise the entire legal description. But it, it is not an impossible task to get the, the exact uh, acreage that is currently zone A3. You understand? You already have Highway Commercial Three up there. I understand, but let me. I want to clarify because I did right. meet with Helen. Okay. And I, I, if you told me you had that information, I totally misunderstood that because I couldn't get a survey because you got to tell the surveyor the dimensions before you can survey it. If you have the dimensions, I would love to see those. I, I don't have the information with me. We have approximate information. Well, approximate however, you can't survey by. However, however, a surveyor is able to do that type of work, and, and we, we can help in well, that. In lieu of surveying it, I paid for the whole 31 acres simply because of the cost of what the survey would have been had we been able to get a survey. I just, my, my, mine's a fairness argument that when Mr. Quistapace bought this property, it was all commercial. He paid a substantial sum for it. He certainly wouldn't have paid that for A3. I understand the, the neighbor's concerns. I mean, we're right here on the interstate. I, I think that's a, a good area for commercial growth. And I, and I hope that you will approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have rebuttal time on those who are against? Come on up. Hi, 
I'm Blaine Rosa, 63067 Pine Acres Road. I'd just like to say that um, this is our neighborhood, okay? When he bought that property, he should have known what was on there, whether it was all HC3 or not. When I buy a piece of property, I make sure of what I've got. And that's why I said I'd like to know when that was changed. If it was that way when he bought it, then it ought to stay the way it was. If it wasn't, if it was all HC3, then understand the man's concern. But we would still need to have at least a buffer zone around the end of that street, okay? But I'm opposed to changing this. If they bought that property and that's what was on the deed at the time, then that's what it should stay. And there ought to be plaques and everything else in the parish government that can show what that original property was set up as. I know mine had it. Anybody that buys property, that's usually the first thing you ask for is let's see the deed and what is it, you know, zoned as. I don't understand why there's so much confusion over this at this time. Okay. But it would be interesting to see what, what portion of it is HC3 and what portion of it wasn't. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, there's still people. Okay. I'll give you your three minutes left on your rebuttal. Yeah. I'm Michael White, 631-63128A Pine Acres Road. This is properties on the southeast corner of the interchange of the of the I-12 and, and 434. Access from the from the highway doesn't exist at this point in time, and for such access to be uh, established, there would have to be either a, a, another on ramp and off ramp constructed to that property, or they would have to make a change to the on ramp to I-12 from that interchange that's already existing. Uh, I don't know what kind of commercial venture they're planning, but if it's anything like a truck stop or a commercial uh, uh, gas station, something like that, there's no easy access. And it, I don't think people would be even interested in getting off and then crossing over Highway 434, and then down another ramp to get to it. Uh, if it were a business park or, or light manufacturing, then they would still have that same problem of access. And unless they were to build an on and off ramp off the freeway, uh, access would have to come through Little Dixie Ranch Road and Pine Acres Road. And we've already mentioned the difficulties that, that would pre uh, present at this particular time. So uh, again, I'm opposed to this completely. So. Thank you. Anyone else on the opposal side? If not, if the gentleman still has a few minutes left to his rebuttal. I want to say I agree with the, the man before this man. If, if Mr. Cuesta bought it and it was A3, then that's too bad. And I, I would even be willing to defer this, obtain the information so everyone can see it, deal with Helen, see if we can talk about doing a buffer that will make everybody happy. I can assure you there's ample access on 434. We don't even, we'll even put it, whatever you want to put that we can't even utilize those roads and, and also have buffers between the subdivision and the, uh, the HC3. So if you'd like, I would like maybe if you could continue it to the next meeting, give me an opportunity to, uh, to meet with these people because I do understand what they're saying. I appreciate it. Okay. Because I do live in Lacombe myself. So. All right, so, thank you. So. If there's no more further comments, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fitzmores. I have a question. Helen, is it possible that this parcel got caught up in the comprehensive rezoning, and is that why it's split? Or that's, was it? That, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, to, I'm bringing up the, the map right now, and I, I can tell you what happened uh, is that there was a 500 foot uh, HC3 zoning that was uh, applied to the map. If you look at the zoning map, uh, you see that it's it's 500 feet along 430, 434, and then it goes along the ramp. That's 500 foot wide. Right. Um, and then I, I'm, I'm pulling up the, the previous map, which is going to show me, it should show me, um, the previous zoning here. Yes, that's correct. According to the, the previous map, the entire site was zone C2 Highway Commercial. At that time, we didn't have HC3. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's the way the council approved the map with just a 500 foot, um, I would say band, or 500 foot portion rezoned to HC3 along 434, and it continues 
uh, along the, the ramp, so the, the, the rear portion of the site was not rezoned to HT3. Gotcha. So based on the applicant, I will make a motion to postpone for one month so more information can be gathered. But to the public, just so you understand what happened here, the parcel was commercial. Through parish comprehensive rezoning, the parcel was split. The property owner probably didn't know until recently, now. So to the gentleman's point who spoke earlier, it was highway commercial, or C, whatever it was, C2, C3 at the time. And then it got changed by the council. So to your, you said if it, that's what it was before, it should stay that. That's what it was before. So anyway, but we'll wait one month and go through the process, if that's what you'd like to do. Okay, I'll make a motion to postpone for one month. Mr. Chairman, do, the, do, the, do you want to schedule a public meeting with the citizen, or does the gentleman want to have his own meeting or, or try to contact the public? I think in all fairness, I think we should probably have a public meeting about this because I know we had a public meeting about the waste transfer station on the opposite yeah. side of 434 several years ago, and I was involved in that. So if we can, uh, Helen, why don't we set up a public meeting? Okay. And, and, and just will be the next available day? Just to clarify this, I, I just did a very, very, very quick calculation doing a triangle. It appears that about maybe eight acres of the entire property is not zoned commercial at this time. Um, yes, I have a meeting date, if you allow me to pull up my calendar. Sure. It would be on the 21st of August at 6 p.m. And that's here in, in this building? Yes, and we would need some of the commissioners to identify themselves as... Uh, I'd like to recommend myself for that meeting, since I live in Lacombe. Do I, I have any... I'll attend since I spoke to the point. Commissioner Fitzmorris, Commissioner Randolph, and Commissioner Commissioner Darity. Okay. Uh, did anyone, um, all the speakers, did everyone fill out a card so we can send them a copy of the, the agenda? Yeah. If not, maybe everyone can come forward and fill out a card. Right. So if everybody can come in and fill up a card who's against this project, and then that way we can notify you on, uh, you know, on this information. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Commissioner Fismore, you said a motion to postpone, correct? Correct. Commissioner Randolph. I second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Reich. Commissioner Richard. Thank you. I I'm obviously support the postponement, but I just want to clarify a few things before you come into this um, community meeting. Um, this particular property has access, adequate access, of 434. So. I can't see in any way whether Little Dixie Ranch or Pine Acres needs to be used in any way. Now, there's no road there now, but if they ever do develop this in the future, that's part of the developmental process. It has not, that's nothing to do with zoning. That's part of planning. So just to let you know that in no way uh, with those roads, it, it's not even feasible. A, a, a developer wouldn't even consider that. Uh, number two is if this property was, in fact, zoned, commercial as we've been led to believe and, and, and how I think it's being verified, there's a solid chance everybody needs to understand that uh, it, it's going to be commercial. Um, we can't turn around and take somebody's property and take it out of commerce because of a line drawn on the map if that's the way it was purchased. That being said, I fully support and we hope at this community meeting that we can work out some adequate buffers for the community. And I, I'm hearing a willingness from the landowner, so I hope everybody comes to this community meeting with that in mind, with an open mind. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fitzmorris. I just want to, and we'll discuss at the community meeting, but also to the residents to just to know when land is developed, there is a 25% reduction of runoff. So while they won't help your flooding problems, it won't make it worse. It'll actually make it better. It'll help. It'll definitely help. So just to let you know, we'll talk about that more in the community meeting now. That's also a planning issue, so. Okay, we have a motion to postpone by Commissioner Fitzmorris and a second by uh, Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. This is a motion to postpone.
Motion passed. We'll postpone. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, I can hear in the audience. Maybe we can repeat the case number. It was 2018-1079-ZC. That's correct. 1079-ZC. 1079-ZC. 2018-1079-ZC. Next case. 2018-1090-ZC. Existing zoning is A2. Proposed zoning is A2 with a rural overlay. The location and parcel located on the northwest corner of Surrey Lane and Red Mill Drive being lot 40, Bell Acre Subdivision, and 56165 Red Mill Drive in Slidell. Mm -hmm. South 21, Township 9 South, Range 15 East, Ward 8, District 13, acreage 2.3 acres. The petitioner is Stancil Lefavre, and the owner is Stancil Lefavre. Hope I didn't mess up that name. Council District 13. Staff. The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses and may also include some agricultural uses. Staff doesn't have any objection to the request considering the size of the property, which is 2.33 acres, and the rural character of the area. Know that the objective of the request is to bring the existing agricultural building in compliance with the appropriate zoning. Staff would like to recommend approval for the request for rural overlay. Thank you. Sir? Yes, sir. I'm Stan LaFaver, the okay. owner. Um, as Ms. Helen mentioned, this is really to bring a building into compliance with zoning. But I did want to clarify, I'm not asking for, nor do I have any plans of asking for, a change in what types of residents can be put on this property. It's currently restricted to stick built and I believe modular. And um, I have no intentions of uh, applying for a change on that. It's strictly to bring the building that's on it into compliance. Okay. Is Thank it you. like a barn or something like that? It's, I actually have a picture of the building if you'd like to see it. No, that's okay. Okay, that's it's, it's a large metal uh, garage, basically, right. building, yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is anybody in the audience would like to talk uh, for this case? Anybody in the audience like to talk against? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Darty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've looked at this, and uh, I don't have any problem with it, so I'd move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Doherty. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Is there any other correspondence? If not, please vote. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay. Case 2018-1091-ZC, text change an ordinance to amend Chapter 130 of the St. Tammany Parish Unified Development Code to add brewery or distillery with tours, specifically Section 130-5 definitions and to Sections 130-1075 I-2 Industrial District Administrative Permits, 130-1108 I-3 Heavy Industrial District Administrative Permits, 130-1130 I-4 Heavy Industrial District Administrative Permits, and 130 2113 minimum standard staff. I'd like to address this. If I can get out of here. I'd like to address this to legal. Legal? Yes, I've been working with Councilman Fitzgerald on this item. This is a brewery or distillery with tours ordinance. It's basically to get the any breweries or distilleries that are operating in the parish to have the same standards apply to them as the farm wineries that we did a few years ago. Um, it's going to be an administrative permit that will allow a brewery to exist in an industrial area, which they're required to do to produce the beer, but also to have some limited tours and tastings and not be in violation with their zoning. So I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Okay, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on this? And I do have a, I mentioned this to you earlier, um, we have one request for okay. an amendment. Yes. To, let's see, B3. B3. 
we have language that says one accessory structure, and that's language that we used from the farm winery, and we'd like to change that from accessory structure to tasting room. So if somebody could please make a motion to amend B3 to remove accessory structure and replace it with tasting room. We won't, we won't have any accessory structures in an industrial area. Okay, and for the gentleman that wants to just, uh, come up and speak. Your name and address, sir. My name is Josh Erickson, address is 1532 Cherry Ridge Court in Mandeville. Um, yes, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to speak in support of the proposed 2018 1091 ZC text change ordinance. My wife, Jamie, mother of our four boys, is also here with me tonight, and together we are the founders of Chifuncta Brewing Company, a very small brewery uh, that was born in June of 2011, just a half a mile north of here, uh, right off the Tammany Trace, Trace, and as you mentioned, uh, in an I-2 industrial zone. Um, a little bit back more story, a, a little backstory about our brewery, uh, just to give you guys some context on why this is important. Uh, March of 2013 was when we obtained all of our federal, state, and parish permits to allow us to sell beer through distribution and become Louisiana's seventh active, cre seventh active craft brewery. To put into perspective the growth of craft beer in Louisiana in those five short years since we opened, there are now over 40 active breweries in the state with a number more in the planning stages. It is also important to note that when we opened in 2013, 100% of our sales were done through distribution as required by Louisiana state law and regulated both by Federal Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau and the Louisiana Alcohol Tobacco Control, as you guys uh, know, is the ATC. However, in August 2015, a change in the Louisiana state law, more specifically House Bill 232, was put into effect, allowing breweries to not only sell beer through distribution, but also sell beer directly to their fans straight from their breweries. Um, it is important to note that this change in the law does not allow breweries to sell liquor of any sort or any other brewery's beer for that matter. Simply stated, we can only sell Chifuncta beer in our brewery and nothing else. And that's really what differentiates us from a bar, a typical bar. Another difference between us and a bar is that people come to a brewery to meet people behind it, hear our story, see where Chifuncta beer is born. In fact, people visiting breweries in Louisiana has become so popular that in 2014, the Louisiana Office of Tourism created the Louisiana Brewery Trail featuring a number of breweries in the state, including St. Tammany's own, Abita Brewery, and Chifuncta Brewery as stops along the trail. There are even multiple high quality professional and produced videos on the Louisiana Tourism website today, showing our breweries along with interviews with myself, other brewery owners, and craft beer fans, all talking about our love for craft beer and by doing so promoting the Louisiana tourism industry. The success of the trail and growing Louisiana craft beer industry as a whole has caused us to outgrow our original 1,500 square foot facility that we moved into in 2013 and recently moved into a brand new 9,000 square foot facility only half a mile north of our first location. Speaking of locations, one advantage both we and Abita Brewery have is our access to the Tammany Trace, allowing people to walk, jog, or ride their bikes and visit multiple breweries along the way. Every weekend we would have folks come into the brewery on bikes, either leaving Abita and coming to us or leaving us and headed tor towards Abita. So not only is this helping generate tax revenue for both the parish and the state, it also promotes St. Tammany as a tourist destination, and we believe that it will also help contribute to the ongoing St. Tammany Gateway Overlay Project, as I'm sure you guys know is designed to help promote economic development and enhance uh, the attractiveness of our community. So for all these reasons, we at Chifuncta Brewing Company agree with the parish's proposal to add the selling and consumption of beer with tours as being allowable in the industrial zones referenced in the proposed ordinance. That being said, there are two items we would like to propose modifying. Uh, number one is the section 130.22.213, amendment 57, 3B, item one, the available hours section. Uh, we'd like to change that from 10 to 6 p.m. to 10 to 9 p.m. Um, not only would allow this, this change would allow folks riding on the Tammany Trace from spring to fall when it is daylight after six to be able to tour our brewery. It would also allow for people that work during the week to come to our facility in the early evening after normal work week business hours. The second change that we would like to put in uh, in that same section, item number two, about the maximum number of visitors from, uh, of 50. Uh, we'd like to change that to a maximum occupancy of whatever the facility is rated right at with the Louisiana Office of the State of the Fire Marshal. Uh, so, you know, something, uh, it could, could read something like, at any time the number of visitors to the brewery distillery shall not exceed the maximum occupancy of the brewery 
or distillery as regulated by the Louisiana Office of State Fire Marshal. Or maybe another simpler option would be just to leave this, uh, this item out as uh, certainly the fire marshal should regulate the occupancy allowed number of visitors at the facility. Um, the reason this is important to us is because all the surrounding breweries to our south in Jefferson and Orleans and to west in Tangipaho Parish don't have any restrictions on the number of visitors. So we create an unfair advantage for those breweries versus the ones governed by St. Timothy Parish. Besides those two items, everything else in the ordinance proposal we agree with at this time and we are hopes that with the council's approval and acceptance of this ordinance that we will be able to share the love and passion we have for Louisiana craft beer with not only the residents of St. Tammany, but with those that come from all around the country to St. Tammany to experience the craft beer taste of Louisiana. Uh, thank you again for your time, and Jamie and I hope to see you at our brewery in the not-so-distant future. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Mr. Erickson. Is there anyone in the audience against this ordinance? Mr. Hernandez. Yes, Carla Hernandez. Let me, um, you know, it's interesting that um, some of my concerns regarding this, uh, this ordinance, and it, and it was interesting, the comparison to the, um, the, um, uh, the winery, the farm winery, and, and almost identical to, to what was being proposed here on this. You know, the, my, my first concern is, of course, and I hope everyone understands, the public understands, that this is an administrative permit that's being proposed for this. So this is not something that's going to come before the commission. So it's something that uh, that's the staff of the, uh, of the commission is going to decide whether it meets these, these requirements. And, and that's one of my concerns, is that the public does not know what administrative permits are, in fact, being approved by, 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 the, uh, by the staff. I've asked for this information be, be put online years ago, and I was told years ago that it would be put online. If it is online, I have yet to see it. So someone needs to explain to me where it is if it is online, which I don't believe it is, and why it's not online, which I hope that someone will, will back me on, on, on this request. Let me, let me tell you the, a couple of other concerns about, about this. You know, the I-2, is the one area, the, the one zoning district that I saw, which had uh, this as a permitted use. And, and the interesting thing is that it's defined as beverage dis distilling, beverage distilling. So you don't find the words brewery uh, anywhere else in the, um, in the zoning ordinance. Yet, I too is where it is. I-3, if you look at I-3 and I-4, where they propose also to have this administrative permit, is not permitted. I, at least I didn't see it where it's permitted. So it's not permitted in I-3 and in I-4, but yet it's being proposed for that. The language in there does not say, oh, anything permitted in I-2, as some of them do, and, and then say the same thing in the previous one. So the only place that I saw it was I-2. Now, the changes that are being proposed. Now, this is seven days a week, the, the daily. It says seven days a week, as far as my interpretation is. So, so now, the, you know, attend to what's now being proposed as, as 9 p.m., uh, that, that would be seven days a week. That's something to consider there. And in terms of the visitors, um, the, 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 the number of visitors, what I'm wondering is where, where since I, I didn't see any in, in the uh, parking um, uh, definitions, restrictions, where where the uh, brewery would, would fall under. So I couldn't determine what the parking regulations would be applicable to, to this. So I'm curious as to what the staff, and, and I guess what I'm really asking for is that this, um, this ordinance uh, be, be uh, postponed for at least uh, 30 days, so maybe some of these questions can, can be answered. Where, where in the... Um, uh, parking regulations would, would it fall under under this and is it true that it's only under I-2 and not as in I-3 and I-4 is being proposed administratively. The the other thing if you if you look at at number four B, B under, under, um, under number four and it reads just like it reads in the uh, in the winery um, in, in the farm winery 
it, it, if, you, if you begin the, 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 um, the sentence, it says tour, beer, or spirit tasting consumption are limited to the tour of the facility and sampling by the general public of beer or spirits and the purchase of beer or spirits by the glass or bottle to drink on or off the premises of the brewery or distillery with tours. I'm, I'm wondering why the, why the word tour is there the first, the first it, it, I don't believe that the word tour belongs there. It, that should be eliminated. But what, the, what is clear, though, is that it, 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 it permits the sale of this anywhere in, on the premises. It, you, you shouldn't believe that only because of the, um, what was being called the accessory structure, now being called the tasting um, um, structure, that it, it's only permitted during the tasting structure. That, there is nothing that restricts it only in the tasting structure. As, as I read the regulations, it is permitted anywhere on the premises, just by that sentence that I just read. Anywhere on the premises, you would be able to sell, you know, this, the the, uh, the beverages. Now, on 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 the fifth on the fifth one, I don't want to read the whole sentence, but let me just say that if you and it was taken just out of the other one too, but it didn't have a second one on on there. The second one mean, and I'm looking at the last the last line. It says other non beer or spirit related items may not be sold. The, the, I think the words the word there is other non-beer or non-spirit related items may not be sold. I think that's what's meant there because as I read, the, the, unless I don't understand English, other non-beer or spirit related items may not be sold. I, I, that to me does not, I, I think you're trying to, to, to sell a spirit related item. So I, I think that, uh, that that's, 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 that's an error there. So. I hope that um, with, with the questions that I've raised and some of the concerns that maybe um, someone will, um, will uh, decide to maybe postpone this for 30 days so we can get some clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Uh, for the gentleman, do you have any rebuttal time? You have rebuttal time if you'd like to speak. Uh, so I guess my only my only take on the gentleman's comments, uh, there was one mention about where beer can be served, you know, and there is a specific item that mentions the 800 square foot portion of the beer of the brewery or distillery may be used for the tasting room. So it does define at least a defined area. Now it doesn't say it's in the right corner, left corner, whatever, but at least it is defining the area. So I think that answers his concern. Uh, uh, his other concerns with you know, some of the clarifications that he needs. I don't know if that's worth postponing something for this gentleman uh, to be clear on things if he didn't do the research enough to know what's clear, what's not clear. So I don't know if it's my first time in a council, council meeting, so I don't know if that's cause for postponement, uh, but that's, I guess that's just my opinion on it. Um, uh, besides that, I think everything uh, else that I heard, uh, talking about the non-spirit, that sh that's an error in the, in, the, uh, in the line where it says you can sell uh, spirit related, it should be non spirit. So I do agree with that change uh, on the amendment. So I think that's it for me. Thank Thanks. you. Any more comments? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. First of all, editing, just, just to, to make sure on the agenda, item number seven is referring to the very last statement, district administrative permits and I-30-21-13, should that be 22 on item number seven, the very last? I just want to make sure that we're referring to the, the right thing. I'll let legal speak on that. Helen, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was when we had our muni code changes. Yes. And we were writing this while yes. the changes were being implemented. Okay. And so our our chat our section went one down. So okay. what's in front of you is correct. Okay. So so the twenty one it would be a twenty two. That that's correct. Okay. But we'll change it. Okay. All right. Um, addressing the uh, item B two. As it relate to uh, the recommend the suggestion, if you will, 
to increase that from from 50 visitors to as many as meet the rules or the or the statutes of the state fire marshal. Um, how does that impact the parking? Or uh, would that impact our parking requirements? Yes, in that you keep the 50 visitors or that you decide to change it to the maximum, maximum occupant load, yes, it will affect the number of parking spaces, which will, they will have to demonstrate that they have a sufficient number of parking spaces to accommodate the maximum occupancy of the building. Okay. Um, item B1, <clears throat> is that a standard timeline that we have in the parish statute as it relates to um, distilleries and brewers with the timeline of 10 to 6? No, sir. Uh, this is the time that is currently um, approved for uh, the winery. However, if the commission wishes to make any changes, I, I don't have any objection, unless if, Carlin, you have any objection. Okay. That's all. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had some of the same questions. So wh what you're telling us on, on B1 is the 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., I guess is, was the, uh, I guess the administrative regulations that were put in for the wineries and the winery tours, and perhaps that's something that's a sun up, sun down. I, I, don't, I don't understand. The 9 o'clock is a request by an interested party, not what legal department is requesting, correct? Correct. Um, that throws kind of a, a curveball to us. Um, since someone in the public is asking for this change versus what we typically get from our legal department. And, uh, you know, while this is in an industrial zoned area, so it's not necessarily, it's not a residential area, uh, it's still something to give us pause that we have to think about. Uh, to me, 9 o'clock, it doesn't bother me any, but is that really what we're here for? Um, I'd really rather legal make that recommendation. Uh, as far as the number of visitors, what I'm hearing you say is that whatever that number is, the overriding uh, factor here is parking availability. So if someone comes to you to get an administrative permit for 50, 75, 100 maximum visitors, you would still look at the facility, the available parking before you would approve it administratively? Absolutely. So you may look at, we may have a number that says not to exceed fire marshal occupancy or 50 or 100, but when they came to see staff for an administrative permit, you could limit that further? Would you limit it further based on parking? Yes. Okay, so in other words, if we have an ordinance that's broad, it's still an administrative permit. You still have to come and on an individual case-by-case -case basis gain approval. Clearly, if we had, uh, if we allow 100 and there's parking for 20, we're going to have the whole parish up in arms if they can't find a parking space and such. So you're going to have to take all that into consideration. And and we are going to take that into consideration. Who, you know, if the gentleman who just spoke um, come forward and you know make the request to have a portion of his building like the 800 square foot used as a tasting room, uh, we'll make sure that it, there's a determination made by the fire marshal as to what the maximum occupancy is, and he will have to show us on a side drawing that he has sufficient number of parking spaces to accommodate um, the, 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 the patrons that would come to his facility. The advantage of being into an industrial area is most of the patrons that would visit you know, quite often will come after hours, on the weekends or in the evening after the other industries are closed. And so most of the time there's plenty of parking spaces available. Okay, one last question. And, and uh, with respect to Mr. Hernandez talking about uh, the, the various uh, levels of industrial, I-2, 3, 4, et cetera, most of our, um, most of our ordinances do refer to the prior zone you know, or the prior level. So I-3 would 
or NC4 would have everything in NC3 plus this. In this particular case, industrial zoning has a whole separate specific um, language that only, only talks about very specific items. So is it appropriate to go? I mean, it's going to be the only thing that sticks out in I3 and I4. Um, I don't know staff if I'm doesn't the have any objection yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, the, I think that the objective of having different uses of allowable under each different category is to make sure that you know I three is reserved you know for the uses that are listed, the permitted use that are listed. Um, if it is the wish of the commission, you know you're welcome to make a change and just allow it under I two. I don't, I don't feel like I necessarily have that expertise to, to override legal on this. And I'm going to allow others. I, I'm in support of this. I think this is good. This is good for economic development. It's good for our businesses. It's good for the trace. But um, I'd like to hear from some of the other commissioners before I make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Drum. Uh, Helen, I'm going to refer to B4, like Mr. Hernandez brought up about tours. First thing is tour, beer, or spirit tasting. I've never tasted a tour. <laughs> and then the consumption are limited to tour of the facility and sampling by general public or beer, blah, blah, blah. In other words, the only time that people will be allowed to drink is during a tour. Correct. But if it's a general brewery, that means the only people who can drink are people who come in on a tour. The guy sitting over there at the bar can't because he's not on the tour. Yes, that's correct. And the objective of this is to then why allow... why have the brewery? The, brewer, the brewery in itself, a brewery is to they make beer. Correct. But everyone I've ever been to, which isn't very many, by the way, um, there is some attached restaurant or bar that you can sit down at and taste what they've produced. And those people aren't on a tour. And I, I agree that these facilities exist everywhere in the United States and elsewhere. However, here we're trying to make it as to only participant of the tours would be allowed to consume. Then again, why have a brewery if only they're the only ones who can drink? Because you may have a brewery that only fabricates or, or make beer and bottle it and ship it elsewhere to be sold in bars, restaurants, or, or, or in a convenience <laughs> store. However, um. however, a brewery here, it, it's the, the, the request here is to, to add the use of tour I'm sorry, it doesn't make. A brewery not is not compete. a brewery is not a bar, correct? Or it's not a restaurant. Let me let me bring this to legal. The purpose of us writing this the way that we did is there is an interest to make sure that we're protecting the industrial areas, and it's an, a concern that's been expressed by by Sidney Fontenot, the director of development, that the more that you allow non-industrial use in an industrial area you have a danger of starting to push the industrial out of that area. So this is a way to balance the fact that a brewery is largely an industrial use, but that breweries do want to have people on site to come and take a tour and to do a tasting. But a full-on bar in an industrial area may not be appropriate. An option for a brewery is to have a large facility that has the ability to have multiple zoning classifications. So a certain facility may be large enough that they have a front that has an HC designation, which allows them to operate a full restaurant or bar. And then behind it, they can operate their true industrial use. But in a small area with a small brewery, we looked at this with the timing, the, the size of the tasting room, the limited number of visitors, so that it's not disruptive to the other industrial uses in, say, an industrial park that might have 
true industrial uses and not have many customers coming in and out every day, to balance that with allowing these small breweries to find a facility in a light industrial area like I-2, I-3. And that's where we're seeing the these breweries. And that's why we picked these zones. So it, not everybody's going to get everything they want here, but it was a balancing factor that we applied that led us to the language that's here today. Thank you. Commissioner Drum, any more comments? Another comment. Um, the gentleman who owns the brewery, may I talk with you, please? Yes. Josh. Josh, I'm sorry. No problem. All, all you do is just manufacture the <clears throat> beverage. Correct. Put it in whatever container you put it in Correct. and ship it out at this time. Correct. You don't have a snack bar. Correct. Why? Because in Louisiana, <laughs> as I mentioned in my presentation, and I know I read it a little quick, quickly and it was kind of long, but uh, in Louisiana, before 2015, that's all you could do. Okay. And that's why we were the seventh brewery in the state. It was very uh, um, limiting for people to get into the business of breweries because you had to distribute your beer. You had to sell it to a distributor like Champagne Beverage, and then they sold it to a bar or a restaurant or a store, like Helen mentioned. Okay. So it wasn't the most attractive uh, business model. We went ahead and did, did uh, decide to start a brewery, um, and I still kept my day job because it was that non-attractive. So I was able to do the brewery on the nights and the weekends and keep my day job to support my family. So yes, it, it doesn't sound like a very good idea, and you're correct. So Louisiana realized that, the state, and the Louisiana Brewers Guild uh, submitted to the state to change the laws to allow us to also sell beer on-premise at our facilities to customers directly and allow us to gain revenue at that point. And that's why we've gone from seven breweries to over 40 okay. in five years, because everybody's doing that now. Okay, well, thank you, okay. Josh. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Commissioner Darity. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the uh, B2, which is the number, and I believe you said you had increased your facility from 1,500 to 9,000 square feet, is that, yes, that right? Uh, when you get the fire marshal to review plans uh, for his approval, uh, the gentleman would have to designate an area for a tasting room, okay? Or uh, maybe at some point in time we move forward and uh, they have a restaurant and bar uh, in the manufacturing facility. And again, the, the fire marshal will designate the, the number of people that can be uh, in that particular area at any one time. Uh, the 9 p.m. I don't have a problem with. Uh, but I think, you know, maybe we do need to let this lay over and, and, and let uh, Helen and Legal uh, get this, the, the changes that we have discussed here tonight so that when we bring this back out next month to the public, we've got a correct copy to hand out and for the commissioners to, to work from. Thank you. Is there anyone else like to speak on? Does anybody want to make a motion? Commissioner Fitzmorris. I'll make a motion to postpone for one month so that the language can be clarified further. I have a motion to postpone for one month by Commissioner Fitzmorris. Commissioner Richard. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Richard. Please vote. Motion, motion passed. Thank you. Okay, case 2018-192-ZC, existing zoning is A2, suburban district, proposed zoning is A3, 
Suburban District Locations Parcel located on the west side of Dixie Ranch Road, south of Idlewide Pines Road, uh, Section 36, Township 8 South, Range 13 East, Ward 9, District 11, approximately 4.09 acres. Petitioner is Remax Michelle Pinino. Uh, owner is the Rosemary Gunn and Willie Gunn Revocable Trust. And Cynthia B. King and Brenda A. Franklin. This is Council District 11. Staff? Before I uh, staff makes his recommendation, uh, I would like to bring to your attention the attached um, survey here. And the request that is um, brought in front of you is the objective of the request is to achieve um, this minor subdivision here of A, B, C, and D. Uh, at this time, the property is surrounded by A2 Suburban District and staff would like to recommend uh, denial of the request. Okay, ma'am? My name's Michelle Panino and I reside at 77247 Panino Road in Covington. Um, the owners of this property live in California and they have asked me to list it for sale and um, to sell it. Um, when I researched past listings of similar sized parcels, I noticed that nothing was selling. Um, they just stayed on the market and never sold. So I thought it's probably best to um, subdivide them into one acre parcels. Um, and when I researched that, they were selling. Um, when we first started looking into it, the A2 zoning seemed to work just fine. We were trying to stick with the 150 uh, foot frontage and um, one acre. Um, but because the lot or the parcel is so oddly shaped with the road that runs through it and um, the roads that kind of run alongside it and curve, um, the A2 didn't seem to work when I was working with the surveyor. We discovered it afterwards. Um, so, uh, I mean, even with the part where Ordone Road, that road that kind of cuts through it there, it cuts off the property and leaves a little over a half an acre off to itself. So we're kind of not sure what to do with that because of that road. Um, so we're asking that the uh, zoning be changed to A3 so that, um, so that that part can be sold and be a buildable lot. And um, it also, the way the surveyor has it drawn out, that seems to be the most sensible way to lay these pieces out to get the acres. Um, yeah. So we're hoping that you can approve that change. Okay, uh, is there anybody in the audience wants to speak for this case? Anybody want to speak against? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Do I have anybody on the commission that would want to speak on this case? Commissioner Jerome. Yes, ma'am. Who owns Ordong Or Road? Um, well, there is a home at the end of Ordong Road. Um, as I understand it, the uh, um, the person who had all of this land, she passed away, and then the daughters inherited it years ago. Um, and before that, before she passed away, she sold that to the people who owned the house at the end of Ordone Road. And I don't believe that that was ever, you know, given the right to make that road there, but that was the way they got to their property. And that's why it cut it off. Let me double check here, but if I'm not mistaken, this is a, a parish maintained road. Yes. If you would allow me. It is me. now, yep. Yeah, so basically that's that's the reason it why it is shown okay. on the survey is that it is now parish maintained. So basically you have a piece of property that is separated by a parish maintained road. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Richard. So I get to dominate tonight. Um, I, I don't, judging by the, the lack of, of, of conversation amongst the, the fellow commissioners, I think we're all probably struggling with this just a little bit. Uh, we've seen instances where we 
we'll do what's almost a spot zoning because a family wants to divide the property and give it to their heirs so that they can all build houses on it. But in this particular case, it looks like, like the petitioner is trying to divide property to make it more marketable. Um, and our job is also to protect the surrounding property owners. It looks like A2 is, and again, we're looking at aerials here, but I just don't see a compelling reason for us to make this change. So I'm going to recommend denial with, as, and, and follow staff's recommendation. I have a motion by Commissioner Richard to deny. Commissioner Richardson. I have a second by Commissioner Richardson. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. <coughs> this is a motion to deny. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I think that the petitioner here would like to ask a question, if possible, before the, the was the vote before the final. Already? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're just not sure, really, what to do with that half acre piece because if it stays a two, it's just. You know, you can't build on it, you can't do anything to it. It'd be it. green space. That's what exactly what it'd be. That's all it would be, um, and you'd be only be able to, to subdivide into A, B, and C parcels at one acre, which would be what is the zoning out there now as A2. Right. I do have, um, I did from, I just took, did this yesterday, that there is A2 on Dixie Ranch Road a little bit before this one. Um, there, I mean, A3. And there's also in C5, just before it as well. Um, it's pretty close to 190, so uh, we thought. But there are large parcels out there. I think this is what the commissioner is is saying now. I mean, just for you to be able to come in and go ahead and rezone the, the, the parcels to a smaller density area may not be a, a good enough suggestion for us to go ahead and override what the current zoning is out there now, even though, again, you could rezone parcel A into A2, parcel B into A2, and parcel C into A2, which is correctly what the A2 zoning is for, and leave parcel D alone. That's all I can say on that. Try to rezone A. Well, I'm just saying is you, uh, go ahead, Helen. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mrs. Panino, and you're welcome to correct me, is that um, are you asking here if maybe the commission would uh, consider just rezoning parcel D to A3. Well, Is as that I understand it, um, A2 also, which we didn't know initially, we thought 150 foot of road frontage was the requirement and an acre. So that's why we had the survey done like we did. But um, because uh, Apparently, A2 also means it has to have 150 feet on the same road. And A does not comply with A2 because it has 122.56 on Dixie Ranch. Then it goes on to Idle Wild. We thought that could be continuous, but it has to be one road, apparently, not coming around and continuing. Um, so A would not comply with A2 to zoning and also from what I understand C would not comply because it has to continue straight back the same width and because it's so oddly shaped with the roads coming around it and through it it just makes it very tricky on um, on um, Dixie Ranch Road on parcel C you have 160 feet facing Dixie Ranch Road on right. parcel B you have 163 on parcel A is just the one that you have 122 feet. You would have to go to the, the, the planning commission to request a variance as well as for parcel D because it's under okay. one acre. So for the zoning board, it's parcel D that we're asking for the change. If, if that's what you would like to uh, make this request and ask the board to consider it. If you would consider it, that would be greatly appreciated. I 
I, th I think staff is not completely opposed to the rezoning of, although it is all surrounded by A2, we have to recognize the fact that there's a parish road which created this 0.5 acre parcel. And basically here, they're just trying to have a legal conforming lot. Um, so we're not completely opposed to it. I, I think that we're just trying to make this parcel legal, which was created because of the construction of this parish road between what was originally a parcel B and D was one parcel. Yes. Yes. I'll make a motion to withdraw my motion. <laughs> okay. I have a motion to withdraw the motion in a second. Basically, what Mrs. Panino is asking here is for the board to reconsider to only have parcel D rezoned to A3. With that in mind, uh, I'll make a motion to rezone parcel D with the variances necessary. It, the, the variances will be handled at the Planning Commission. It okay. will be coming back in front okay. of you. Okay. It'll come back to us later. So I'll make a motion to rezone parcel D. I have a motion to rezone parcel B into D. A2. D. 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 D isn't. Oh, D. Yes. Okay. Parcel D to rezone it from A2 to A3. Is that correct? That's correct. And leave everything else as A A2 in that area. That's correct. Okay. I have a second. We have a comment over here. Can you do that? I'm, I'm kind of messed up over here. Changing that, port, changing that zone from A2 to A3 for half acre, what would that do? I mean, what can you com commercially or residentially do with that other than build just one house? Is that the purpose here? <laughs> Yes, that's correct, right. is that okay. it will allow um, the petitioner, the owner, to come back to the Planning Commission to okay. request to have the minor subdivision approved as shown on the attached drawing, mm -hmm. and this 0.5 acre will be a legal lot of record meeting the A3 suburban zoning district and minimum lot size. Okay if the Planning Commission approves the minor subdivision as proposed. Okay, are we clear on that now? Hmm? I think so, okay. We're uh, uh, making a motion to approve to change the zoning on parcel D only from A2 to A3. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. All right, please vote. Motion passed, pass. thank you. Case number 2018-1093 ZC. Existing zoning is A1. The proposed zoning request is A1A and with a rural overlay. Location parcel located on the north side of Stone Hill Road, west of Louisiana Highway 25, South 32, Township 4 South, Range 10 East, Ward 2, District 3, 8 acres in size. The petitioner is Wayne Weiser and the owner is Nicole and Jared Weiser in Council District 3. Staff? Staff is not in favor of the request considering that the site is surrounded by undeveloped land and single family residences on large parcel of land zone A1 suburban district. I would also like to point out that you have an attached um, survey here that shows the objective of this request which is to create um, parcel, is to subdivide 
parcel C into two parcels, two four acre parcels. Um, at this time, staff would like to recommend denial of the request. Okay, do I have the uh, requester here to speak? Yes, sir, your name? My name is Joseph Bro, 214 Stonehill Road. This property was just simply uh, an inheritance for two children. Uh, they've been there for over 15 years in that location. It's just a legal issue. If he owns, if, if the son owns four acres in the front and the daughter owns four acres in the back, if, if one has trouble, the other one's land wouldn't, wouldn't be gone. That's why they're trying to divide it. So you're trying to divide it into four acre parcels? Yes, Is sir. that what you're trying to do? Yes, sir. And of course, A1A would allow three acres. Okay, do I have uh, anybody in the audience who would like to speak for this case? Against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Thank you. Do I have any commissioners that would like to speak on this matter? Commissioner Drum. Sorry. Sir, may I have you back up here, please? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking at this survey. Yes, sir. And so you're going to have um, partial C, correct? Yes, sir. B1, B2, and A1. Not this square in the middle. That has you're not wanting to change that, correct? The parcel, the, the C, the eight acres is the one that's going to be split in between two uh, siblings. Okay, so we're only talking about this one right here, this side. Correct. All this other stuff we're not concerned about. No, sir. B one was actually sold uh, to take care of debt for the mother that passed. Okay. Uh, the only only thing that's left is C, which you're trying to split. Eight acres into four acres apiece. Okay. And how are you going to break this down? The access road, uh, they both family, the siblings. There will be an access road to both pieces of property. Um, I mean, we have to have a survey exactly even, you know, where they end up with the exact even amount of land. So it's not like just going straight across and since you both family members are going to be using the same road. Correct. 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 In fact, it'll probably show that the road, uh, I guess, would be part of the, part of the parish. Uh, I mean, I don't know the legal terms of saying it, but the road is never going to leave. No, no, I, I understand. At all. And I see you have a house on the back side. Yes, sir. And so the other family member would put something on the front side. Yes, sir, according to whatever uh, zoning laws they are. Okay. I have a fall off the road. Okay. I was I was confused, but then that is me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, if you look if you look at B one and all the other land, I mean, it's broke up into one acres and three acres. But we actually acted for something larger than that, four acres, yeah. which sums up more than the neighbors. Okay. Well, I thank you very much. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Commissioner Drum, would you like to make a motion, or would you like to just let the rest of the commission talk? I, Commissioner Drum, would like to make a motion that. Um, this property be rezoned A one A. Right. I have a motion to approve for A one A. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Any more comments? If not, please vote. Thank you. Case number 2018-1094-ZC, existing zoning is A5, two-family residential district. Proposed zoning is an A4, a single-family re residential district with a manufactured housing overlay. Location parcel is located on the east side of Jacob Road, south of Brownswick Road, uh, South 31, Township 8 South, Range 15 East, Ward 8, District 9, approximately 0.918 acres. The petitioner is Salvador Encina Renataza, and the owner are the same. 
Council District 9. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the site to be developed with residential uses compatible with the existing uses and density in the area, including manufactured homes. At this, at this time, staff would like to recommend approval of the request for A4 single family residential and manufactured housing overlay. Thank you. Is uh, Mr. or Mrs. Ranataza here? I'd like to speak. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Renasa. Renasa. Good evening. That's Italian. <laughs> Sal Renatza, live at 60282 Jacob Road, a lifelong resident there. What I uh, propose is to have a, a single uh, trailer overlay put onto the property uh, for the purpose of uh, accommodating my son. Uh, to be close to me. So th that's, that's it in a nutshell as far as that. I did give, uh, give the young lady a, uh, an overview uh, view of where the uh, trail is going to be located. Uh, the, uh, it'll be approximately 250 feet behind my existing home. So it's not uh, uh, very close to anything. It's out in the middle of the property, out in the woods. Okay, thank you. Uh, is thank there anybody you. like to speak uh, against this case? Anybody for the? I have a yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Vicki Pruitt, and I am two. Uh, come on up to the. In the Vicki Pruitt, six zero two three four Jacob Road. Yeah, Vicki. Uh, question as to the septic system. Uh, we have the there. There is no parish septic system out there. It's all septic. Uh, in in house, and I'm curious, will it join yours? No, just here we go. Here we go. Okay, so then it won't be draining into that ditch in front that never dries. No. <laughs> okay, that was it. All thank right, you. thank you, ma'am, for your concern too. Any other comments from the audience? I'll bring it back to the commissioners. Commissioner Randolph. Motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Darity. I'll second it, but I also have a question uh, uh, for the owner. The uh, 10 much, buildings sir. that are all kind of scattered through the property, what's the purpose of those? Those buildings are all going to be removed. Okay. Um, uh, I just couldn't figure out what you had there. I didn't know if you were raising rabbits or... Well, at one time we raised, raised miniature horses, and they had out barns and, and feed uh, facilities and things like that. Uh, as we got uh, farther into our lives, we decided to, to abandon that. A little bit of trouble, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, it was too much, <laughs> perfectly honest with you. Uh, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. You got a second, Jimmy. Okay. I have a, a motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph with a second by Commissioner Darty. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion pass. Motion pass. Case 2018-1096-ZC, existing zonings A1A, proposed zonings A3 and A5, location parcel located on the west side of Eugene Wallace Road, south of Cleveland Road, south 8th, Township 6 South, Range 12 East, Ward 10, District 6, acreage 1.27. Petitioners James Robert and Carrie Landry Bolton, and the owners are the same. Council District 6. Staff? Yes. Basically, uh, this site is uh, currently surrounded by A1 zoning. However, there is an existing two family residence on the property as well as a single family residence or garage apartment. And this is the reason for the request here is to bring the site into compliance with the appropriate zoning. Okay, yes sir, your name and address. My name is James Robert Bolton Jr., uh, 76365 Eugene Wallace Road. Uh, in 2009, my wife and I purchased the property. It was currently for, uh, fully rented with three units 
not a triplex traditionally, but a, a larger main house, and then a mother-in-law suite, for lack of a, a better term, an apartment with a shared wall. And there was also a converted barn next door that uh, composed the, uh, the third unit. So we purchased the property uh, in 2009, and then in the last few years, in an attempt to approve, improve the property, we, we attempted to refinance. So that was when we realized that shortly after we purchased the property, it was rezoned and the underwriters denied our request due to the, the inability to rebuild the three units as, they, as it sits, because um, you can't have three units there. So I guess it's grandfathered in but if the, the structures were destroyed, we wouldn't be able to put it back the way it is now. Um, full disclosure, we did manage to find someone to refinance it for us finally, but it took six lenders and you know a lot of trouble. It, it also affects the saleability of the property. If we were ever try to sell it down the road, I'm assuming the next buyer would have the same difficulties obtaining financing um, in order to purchase the property. So basically all we're, we're asking for is to not even resub anything, just designate two different sections of the existing 1.27 acres to, uh, as Helen mentioned, to comply with the zoning. That's it? Thanks. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody in the audience would like to speak for the case? Or against the case? Uh, if not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Well, one question first before I bring it back to the commission. Uh, staff, in your initial description, you say your your recommendation is to deny. We recommend in denial to remain consistent with the surrounding um, zoning, which is a one a. Okay. However, we recognize the fact that which, what's shown on the survey is that what is the, a residence is basically currently a duplex, and what is identified as a barn is a single-family residence. Okay. Thank you. With that, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Motion to approve. I have a motion, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph, Commissioner Richard. Uh, is this a, another situation where... It, Zoning was changed during comprehensive rezoning. In other words, it was previously zoned correctly. I don't think it was previously zoned correctly. If I'm not mistaken, it was zoned suburban agricultural, and it was a time that under suburban agricultural duplexes were allowed. Okay. Right. So, in other words, when when the gentleman bought the property, uh, he was in compliance, and it's changed. So potentially, uh, I, or when the house was built. I second the motion. I have a second by Commissioner Richard. Any other comments? If not, please vote. Motion passed. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yes, they are. And as a matter of fact, that's, uh, we should probably combine these in, in the one discussion and then vote separately on these cases. So let's talk about the, the first part of this last two cases. 2018-1099-ZC, existing zoning, I-4, heavy industrial district. Proposed zoning change to solid waste management district 1. Location parcel located on the south side of T.J. Smith Parkway, west of U.S. Highway 11. Section 23, Township 8 South, Range 14 East, Ward 8, District 9, approximately 3.988 acres, belongs to St. Joe Brickworks, uh, M.P. Schneider, and also the owner of St. Joe Brickworks, Inc., and M.P. Schneider, Council District 9. Staff? The site is currently surrounded by land zone I-4 Industrial District and is proposed to be developed as a solid waste management site. Note that the purpose of the Solid Beach Management District is to provide for the location of use, including 
and generally compatible with the collection of solid waste material and for the transportation to processing facilities. And at this time, staff would like to recommend approval for the request for SWM1 for both 2018-1099 uh, and 2018-1100. Okay, and is there a representative here to talk about both cases? Yes, sir. Um, Sean Burks with J.B. Burks and Associates uh, representing the petitioners. Um, basically, we have uh, uh, two parcels of land we're recommending to get rezoned uh, from I-4. to It's a down zone to SWM1. And um, just here if you have any questions. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience who is against this case? Anybody for it? If not, I'll bring it back to the commissioner. Commissioner Randolph. Uh, uh, Commissioner Randolph has a motion to approve. Commissioner Darty. Uh, I'll second it, but I do have a question, Sean. Sure. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the surrounding property or properties uh, on this are going to remain, I guess, in, since they're I 4, but it's going to be acting as a buffer. They're not going to be developed. It's, it's, is that your understanding? Yes, there's there's I-4 around the property. There's going to be a 200-foot buffer um, around the facility and a 100-foot no-cut buffer on a portion of the facility as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a – do I have a motion to approve yet? Or? We do have a second. We have a motion by Commissioner Randolph and a second by Commissioner Darty. Uh, Commissioner Lauren. Yes, this is for the first case. But, well, the second to last case. This is for the second to last case. This is for the second to last case. 1099. On the zoning. Please vote. Motion passes. I'll read out the next case, which is 2018-1100, ZC, existing zoning is I-4. Uh, proposed zoning is, is a solid waste management district. Parcels located on the north side of T.J. Smith Parkway, west of Highway 11, Ward 8, District 9, 3.495 acres. The petitioner is Chris Jean. Owner is Bush Farms, Inc., Linda Bush Burdine, Council District 9. Staff? I guess staff had the same comments. <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> Sorry, is there any more comments about this case or the same? No, I had made the recommendation for both okay. cases. Okay, all right, yes. well, thank you. Yes, sir. And just here representing the petitioners and uh, here if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fitzmorris. Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Commissioner Randolph. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Darty. Chairman. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I'd like to say that if, if any of you all have not had the opportunity to take a ride down the boulevard, uh, T.J. Smith Seniors Boulevard. Initially, it was established so that the residents and some of the businesses on Airport Road would have another access, or another ingress, <coughs> outgress uh, from that area. But also, it's it was set up because of the area to provide more industrialization and commercializing on that side and um, I'm fully in support of this. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Darty. Thank you. Uh, Helen, under the location on your staff report, it says partial located on the north side and I believe that's on the south side. It, it's a typo. Okay. We'll correct it. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. I have a question for Mr. Burkwell. Sure. 
So once these are, are, are both going to be the, the solid waste management district, it's basically going to be another transfer station? Is that what it's going to be? That is correct. And yes. it's going to be similar to the one that was built off of 434? Yes, in 59. And, was, and, that, and that we're all worked out very well. Yes. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let's please vote on this case. The motion was to approve. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we have a plan review case. That's up. It's PR 17-12002, use, reconfiguration of proposed retail center, corridor, highway 24, 21 plan corridor overlay, zonings, highway commercial 2, highway commercial district, use is 48,000 square foot. The petitioner is Scott Gross. The owner is JSB Highway 21 Lots, LLC, John S. Bowers III, and the location is located on the east side of LA 40, Highway 21, south of Azalea Drive, uh, Section 47, Township 7 South, Range 11 East, Ward 1, District 1. Staff? Any the, petition, the petitioner is proposing a reconfiguration of the previously approved retail center, um, basically to provide additional parking spaces to accommodate medical uses and also to remove approximately one acre of land to be developed separately. And in your packet, I included um, the previously or currently approved plan and uh, the new proposed plan. And staff is in favor of the request. Okay. Is the petitioner here would like to discuss or anything? Yes, sir. Good evening. Scott Grove, 545 Bush End Drive. I'm the engineer for the property and... Um, Obviously, the uh, change was to accommodate additional medical use. We see that the developer sees that as the uh, driving factor in the market. And of course, as you're developing vanilla shells, it varies. So the addition of the output <coughs> was to allow more flexibility. Okay, thank you very much. Is anybody in the audience uh, speaking for this case or against this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. Chair, could I get you to step up, please? <clears throat> I've driven by there the last couple of days, and there's all kind of construction going on. I'm down 21 on the east side. Yes, sir. Of, of 21. But the, the main thing I want you to be aware of, not tonight, we're here to talk about the zoning. But when it comes before the details, we want to make sure there's no, there, the, the requirements for Highway 21 with the planned corridor overlay, the requirements are much more stringent than they would be if you were on 1085 or 1077 or any of those roads. Okay? Absolutely. Uh, that is uh, we just want to make sure because we've we've held up the other merchants yes, up sir. and down that road to the higher standard. Yes, sir. And this was done to the higher standard. So. Just want to make sure. Yes, sir. Don't want to, don't want to get caught short. <laughs> Commissioner Randolph. I want to appreciate you bringing us a shorter list this time. Yes, sir. Very impressive. I'm taking Mr. Lawrence's spot this time. <laughs> um, but do you have any problems with uh, items one through eight and satisfying no, those sir. issues? With that in mind, I so move. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Richard. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. Uh, no, one, one last question. No, it's fine. I, act, I, I should just stand up. Yeah, you should. I, I, I second the motion, but I have a question. Since we're talking about a medical facilities, you heard our conversations earlier tonight yes, about parking. Yes, sir. Are we off base on that? What's uh, the? Uh, I'm going to say that I'm kind of in your realm where I'm not really an expert. I do know that for this site, the medical demand is almost <laughs> seven times a normal office demand. Right. So it's pretty stringent. I'm not going to, 
And as, as a site planner and an engineer, it was very difficult to, to try and get the, you know, when you're working for a developer, the answer is always, I want as much as I can get, much leasable space as everything else. And with the medical component, it's very difficult to accommodate the parking. Mm -hmm. However, like you mentioned earlier, never been to a doctor's office without the parking lot full. So I can sort of understand that there's doctors, there's staff, and then there's a high turnover rate of patients and sometimes a full waiting room. So you can understand where the cars are. So I appreciate your comments. I, we're, we're hopefully going to find a, a good compromise there, but, uh, but thank you for the answer. I, again, I second the motion. And I have a second by uh, Commissioner Richard. Any more discussion? If not, please vote. Motion passes. I have no old business. Is there any new business? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, I know.